Hi, I'm DJ Dino from Jinxer Games, and this tutorial is about how you can use hash tables for conditions. Let's get started. First, I will explain you what's the difference between an array list and a hash table. And the main difference is that you can use key names. So as you can see on an array list, I have my variables here and I can change them, but I cannot change my item numbers or elements. And so I only can reference them with index numbers. And an hash table, I can use index strings. So I can name my keys. So if I want to look for a key, I can use this string to find it anywhere in my list. And that's the main difference for the hash table proxy. So I have my string and then I have a variable. Okay. Now on my items here, I have a mouse down and then when I click my mouse on one of the objects, I do a bool flip and this will flip the bool value from this bool variable. So if it would be false, it will be set to true. And if it would be true, it would be set to false. Then I have my hash table set here. And that is to set my hash tables here. Let me select this and oh, and lock this and go back to my cube. As you can see, so I'm referencing to this game object and then I'm referencing to the list. So I have my list here. Actually, this I can remove now as I don't need it. So I'm referencing to the list and I'm looking for this key name called cube. And as you can see, I have a cube here. And then from this cube, I'm going to set the bool variable to my bool variable value. So if it's true, it's going to set this to true. If it's false, it's going to set this to false. Then I'm going to do a bool test on my bool variable to look if it's true or if it's false. And if it's true, I'm going to set my red material. And if it's false, I'm going to set a white material and then just go back again to wait for a mouse down. On the other ones, I have exactly the same, except uh, my key name is different. So I'm looking for my sphere and on the other one, I'm looking for my cylinder down here. And, and the next one, I'm looking for my capsule. Let me play this quick so you can see what's going on. And first, let me set this to live update. So they're going to be updated live. And you can look here. If I click on my sphere, the sphere is going to be set to true and the color to red. When I click again, it's going to be white and it's going to be set to false. And this works the same on all the other objects. Okay. Next, I have some buttons here to test if I can open my gate or window. And let me unlock this. That's a simple button here. And I'm gonna do this that's a simple button here and I just have here an on click event and how you can do this is simply press plus here and drop in your object. Then select Playmaker FSM, send event and then place in your event name. So for try gate, you can also have multiple um, events sent to multiple FSMs. So that's very useful. Let me remove this again. And now this will send this event, try gate and try windows. As you can see here, it says try windows and here try gate. 
then I have my hash tables here. So I have my list of objects and these are my condition lists. So for my gate, I want to know if my cube is true, if my sphere is true and if my capsule is true. And for my windows, I want to know if my cube is true, my sphere is false and my cylinder is true. Okay. Now on the FSM, I have first a set string value and I'm going to set this reference to window to try my window. And on the other one, I'm going to set my reference to gate. So this is a useful thing also with the hash tables and array lists that you can use reference names. So it's easy to select uh, a different array list or hash table. And with the built-in arrays, um, you cannot do that. So it's a little bit more uh, difficult to select different arrays. So this is also very useful with array lists. The next thing I do is a set bool value and I use this to reset and I will show you in a minute why I use this reset bool. And then I have a set game object and I'm getting my text field object here. So if it's try windows, I'm gonna change the text on my windows result and on the gate I have my gate result text here, which will show here below and it will say yes or no. Then after I did the setup here, I have my hash table get next and a game object is use owner as the hash tables are on this object. Then I have my reference with a reference variable. So that's going to be window or gate. And it's going to run through gate or windows, depending on your reference. Then I have my reset here. And um, the reason I have my reset here. So if I'm looping here and when I'm comparing, there is something that is not equal, it's going to stop the loop. But it can be possible that it's stopped halfway and not in the end. So if I would go back here again, it will continue unless I do this reset. So that's very important if you want to start over again and not continue from the last time it ran through this action, then you need to reset. Then I have my start index to zero and my end index to zero. So it will start from the beginning and it will loop until the end. Then when I get this value here, I'm going to loop this and then come back again and get the next one until every item has been checked here and it's going to send the done event. Then what I'm going to get is I'm going to get the key name and I'm going to get the bool value. So I'm going to get the key from, let me see, uh, the reference is here. So from the gate, I'm going to get this cube and then I'm going to get the value from the cube. And the next one, I'm going to get the sphere and the value from the sphere and the same again for the capsule and value. And the value will go in here. Then on the next one, I'm using this hash table get and I'm going to get this item. So this key name, I'm going to look for it in my list. So the first one would be cube. So I'm going to look for this cube and it doesn't matter if it's on key zero or if it's on key three, it will look for the cube and not for an element number. So that's a very nice advantage. And then I'm going to get my variable here. So I'm going to look for this bool if it's true or false. And I'm going to store this in this list bool. And I also have here an item found and item not found if the item would not be in the list. So that's another condition that you can use actually. So if it's not in the list, 
it's just going to say item not found and look for the next one. And if it's in the list, it's going to go to my compare. And on my compare, I have a bool compare. You can get this on the ecosystem. And actually, uh, the hash table also you can get on the ecosystem and it's included in the array maker. And I should have said that in the beginning from the tutorial maybe, but uh, sorry for that. So uh, this bool compare, I especially made it just now for this video, as I noticed there is nothing that does that. So here you go. That's the item to check bool. And I have my compare to variable. And if both are equal, I have this same event. And if they are not equal, I have this not same event. And I can also store this, but uh, in my case, I don't need it. And I can also do this every frame, but in this case, I don't need that also. And if it's the same, it will look to the next one. And then goes again. And if all of them are true, then it's going to send this yes event. So the conditions are good. But if one of them would be false, so if they would be compared and they are not the same, then it's going to set this no event. So let's play this. And I can give it a try. Both of them say no. And let me see. So for the gate, I need this cube, capsule, and sphere to be true. Uh, sphere, cube, and capsule. Let's try this again. Yes. Turn this on. And no good. Turn this on again. Yes. Then let me see. Go back here and lock this. Then for my window, I need my cylinder to be true, my cube to be true, and my sphere to be false here. But let's try first this, and let's do this. And yes, my conditions are good. So this is a way that you can do conditions with hash table. Thank you for watching. If you liked the tutorial, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. You can support my work by becoming a patron at Patreon or donate me with PayPal or purchase my assets on the asset store. You can find the links in the descriptions below.